What's up nieces and nephews? Welcome back to the Uncle Bogator channel. Today is uh, kind of an unexpected little adventure that we're going on. I don't know if I've kept it any sort of a secret or not, but I have been wanting uh, to look for an old Evo or shovel head uh, to add to the collection. And uh, I've kind of been loosely searching for the last I don't know, three months or so. And uh, we're gonna go take a look at a couple today. Not sure if uh, we're actually gonna pull the trigger. I'm gonna take some money with me just in case, but uh, uh, we got a couple that I think are gonna be real winners. And so yeah, come along with me for the ride and uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll be on a different motorcycle by the end of the day. Maybe. Hell yeah, we're back for the uh, Carl vlog, the Volkswagen vlog. The adventures of Volkswagen Vogator. Vogator, if you will. Anyway, it's too much. One thing I can say that I appreciate is that uh, sometimes when you get married, you get the added benefit of having a driver, a dishwasher, a cook, a maid, a nanny. Fuck great, man. So uh, if you're not married yet, I highly encourage you to take advantage of all the benefits and features that come with it. She's uh, not impressed with my evaluation of our marital situation. No, but seriously, she does a whole lot for me specifically and then the family in general. But uh, one thing I think is really fucking cool is that she's always down for these motorcycle adventures. Okay, she doesn't want me to drive. She thinks I'm too impatient or I curse a lot of people. Meanwhile, she scares the fuck out of me with her driving habits. So, no, uh, we're on our way up to look at the first one, which in my opinion is gonna be the one. If not, I do have another one that I can't go look at today. Um, it'll be another day, but uh, this one is a 1996 Dyna. And uh, it's all done up, it's got low miles. Uh, by the pictures and talking to the guy, it just so happens that he is, he grew up in New York with one of the dudes I work with that I actually like and trust his word on. So I got a good feeling about this one. Uh, he did say the uh, O-ring for the drain plug, oil drain plug was leaking oil. I just so happened to have drain plugs in, or uh, O-rings in the house. So taking some oil up there, we're gonna drop the oil, change the O-ring, plug it up and make sure it's not leaking there. And uh, yeah, we'll see you up the road, man. I'm excited. All right, boys, I couldn't even tell you what I've done right now, but uh, we've got a name for it, but we're not going to unveil that just yet. We've got about 50 miles uh, before we get back to the house, and uh, that'll be probably the best test ride that you could ask for, right? Here she is in all her glory, 1996 Dyna. I'm gonna check the, uh, the VIN number when I get back to work. I'm pretty sure it's just a, a, a super glide based on the amount of aluminum that's on the motor and, and no chrome etc but yeah baby we'll get a little bit more in detail later uh we'll throw the gopro on this is not like anything i've ever had before so it's different we'll talk about it all right boys let's do it uh for all of you harley haters out there you'll be delighted to see that we have this nice oil leak 99% sure it's coming out of the uh, drain plug. If not, I think the oil pan drain plug hole is actually um, a little elongated. Not a difficult fix at all. Um, this is my, yep, let's hear how she sounds. I think she sounds great for now. Yeah, I've never had a uh, big twin Evo. You guys hear me talk about my Sportster often. I have that uh, Evo Sportster, but never a big twin. Let's get down the road. Hell yeah. She's got an Andrews EV 27 cam. Got progressive rear shocks. I don't know what he did with the front. It's got a Dan Moto two into one exhaust, the saddleman seat, the tires are dated like 25 weeks of 23, so they're they're pretty new. Yeah, 
Uh, boy, with that cam, it's got a nice little, nice little pep to it. That's amazing. Oh, it feels great. I'm not really a fan of T-bars normally. I understand why people put them on. I know it's for, uh, you know, a little bit tighter steering without having the flex of an ape hanger. I get that. Uh, we're going to stop at least halfway and uh, grab some food. And I'm also going to keep an eye on the oil. Not only is the oil leaking a little bit, but uh, ah, it's been in there a while. It's extremely black. Yeah, I was very nervous, man. I was very nervous about buying this bike uh, because I don't know anything at all about Evo. Not that I'm a wizard when it comes to twin cams or anything, but twin cams are all I've ever known in terms of a, uh, a big twin Harley Davidson. So this was a very risky purchase. You know, everybody that I work with or all my friends who, you know, work on the Evo platform all tell me what a great platform it is how easy it is one of the reliable motor yada 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 so i'm like you know what guess we're gonna find out right uh this guy had four harley davidson's he's like i just want room in my garage man he said i bought this three months ago put a bunch of money into it i love this paint i already know some people are gonna hate it and you're gonna let me know about it in the comments but it's unique it's very unique. It's called like Miami Glitz Tropical Ooze Tennis Ball Yellow. It's got a really long name. Get back to the house and uh, take a walk around on it. I definitely want to change the oil today and get a good assessment of what's going on with that uh, with that drain plug. If I've got to buy a new oil pan, I'll buy a new oil pan. It's a couple hundred bucks, but. Uh, I really want to make this thing nice, you know what I mean? I want to see what I can do with the engine, see if I can brighten it up a little bit. Definitely want to get some mirrors. This guy's a stunt rider. Anyway, I know a lot of guys take off mirrors. They take off turn signals. And I'm not always the safest guy in the world, but I don't like not, not, not knowing what's going on behind me. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely going to put some mirrors on. Uh, the turn signal in the back isn't working. I'm going to assume that there's no turn signals in the front. The relay doesn't quite know what to do. I'll be able to troubleshoot that and figure that out. I don't think that's gonna it cost too much. You know what I mean? I do like that as a contrast to all the modernity, all the current trends that Dyna Bros do. I do like that there's a little taste of ye old Dyna. There's actually two little tastes of ye old Dyna. One, you've got the live to ride gas cap, brother. Hell yeah. And this is a functioning fuel tank. How about that? I didn't even know they were doing that in 96, honestly. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're supposed to go to a concert tonight. And, or this afternoon, late this afternoon. But I'm also on a time crunch with the uh, impending doom that is the Florida early summer afternoon rains. So hopefully we can beat those in time and it doesn't rain on our parade. <laughs> Get it? once we get back to uh, old D-Land. So we're gonna get on up the road. I'm gonna find somewhere to grab some food and uh, check the oil again. I'm gonna keep a close eye on that as we go. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see you up there. All right, boys and girls, welcome back. It is the following day. I did not want to wait until today to get more footage on the Dyna. I had fully intended to ride it over to a Reverend Horton heat show last night, but we had some thunderstorms going on. And, uh, you know, this bike, we're, I'm gonna show you a little bit more of the details on the bike, but uh, this bike, the guy that I bought it from only had it for three months. Um, it's, a, it's got 19,000 miles and it's 28 years old. So needless to say, it's been a little bit neglected on the inside a little bit. The oil looks a little bit old and dirty. Uh, as I got near the house, we had a couple of issues. I couldn't, I couldn't get it to shift all the time. I mean, I'm talking like two miles away from the house. It wouldn't shift and right. It's shifting fine now. So I got a feel on the clutch is way out of adjustment or there's low oil in the transmission, the primary or both. So we're gonna do a clutch adjustment today. Um, actually, I'm gonna do a three hole and uh, there's some problems under there I'm gonna show you too. The, the drain plugs are not the stock drain plugs. I did order those today. Worst case scenario, I gotta buy a new oil pan, but for now we're gonna get it done uh, with what I got. If the fluid changes don't completely fix the uh, shifting issues, you're probably gonna have to adjust the shift pawl. I've never heard of that. I learned all about that today. So it's been a great day. I was able to learn something. And uh, wouldn't you know, this yellow shirt of maintenance kind of matches. I mean, it's a little old and dingy now. The shirt's three years old. 
But let's show you around the bike a little bit. Yeah, I was out in public yesterday getting gas when we first looked at it, so I didn't want to uh, be out there recording the whole time. But this paint, I love the paint. I know that's going to be a turnoff for some people, but I freaking dig it. It's called like Miami Tropical Tennis Ball Ooze or something like that. Um, the, the mags are powder coated white wall wheels you can still see the blue on there so he clearly hasn't like washed that off which is fine by me it's got an sns super e-carb it's got an andrews ev27 cam in there um, i looked at the base gaskets all around before i picked it up so they're not leaking or they've been changed uh, you got these progressive shocks on there i didn't look close enough to see what what model they are but they are 13 and a half and that lift is pretty freaking gnarly this is all the stuff that i make fun of on a regular basis but i do think it kind of looks cool you can kind of catch in the sunlight there uh the little bit of uh pearl flake and it's in the speedometer housing it's in the pedals it's in the gear shift uh, you got the tc bros crash bar up front you got these little guys back here i mean i don't plan on doing any stunts but who knows uh, this is a dan moto two into one exhaust um i read about them i don't particularly like how they sound um, they do sound pretty cool for the most part, uh, but I, you know, after hearing my wife's uh, SP Concepts 2 into one uh, this one doesn't quite live up to snuff, but it is a high flow exhaust, so that's good there. Okay, another problem I had, you'll notice that this is a chain conversion, so I've never ridden a chain conversion, and I was a little bit thrown off because the wheel is off center. And uh, I started looking around, and apparently, because the uh, belt sprocket is so much fatter like all the hardware that goes in there that when you do convert to a chain that it sits a little bit further to the left all right no worries but one of the problems i had was that this adjuster was completely loose yesterday uh, i don't know when it came loose fortunately i was able to get home just fine the wife says she did notice it wobble a little bit no worries i'm not mad at the guy i mean he only had it for three months and i don't know what he knew or what he didn't know about the bike the nut doesn't have its little uh, key cotter pin inside of there. I did buy one of those today. So I've got a paddock stand coming. I had one before when I had the Royal Enfield and the Triumph. I tossed it about six months ago thinking I would never need it again. There I go thinking again, that was a stupid decision. So paddock stand is gonna come tomorrow so I can get this chain adjusted right. Um, I've never adjusted a Harley chain. And if you guys know Harleys at all, you know there's not really any markings over here. Uh, so you have to do some measurements when you do it. but. Um, slick bike, man. I really like the bike. The, uh, the fuel gauge works. The Hell Yeah Brother gas cap is on there. That's always good. Uh, the low oil pressure light doesn't seem to work, so I'm going to troubleshoot that. Uh, it's only got the rear brake light and turn signal, but I don't think you put any load resistors in there. Uh, so when you turn the turn signals on, it just stays 100% you know, lit all the time. It doesn't flash. I don't think any of these things is going to be very difficult. It just needs to be given a little TLC. That's the kind of stuff I like. And it also provides content. And uh, uh, that's what YouTube's for, providing content, right? So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock out this three-hole oil change uh, and this clutch adjustment. I don't think you guys need to watch all that, so I'll kind of speed it up through here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you when we're done. All right, one thing I did want to point out, these uh, drain bolts are supposed to both be uh, 5 8 inch bolts like normal um, so this thing is leaking he's got the wrong bolt in here we're gonna find out if it's stripped or not so you've got an allen head and you got a three-quarter you know that's totally wrong yeah like I said I've got two uh, two new drain plugs on order at the Harley shop that will not look good yeah see this is the totally wrong I mean I've got o-rings this guy tried to use a, uh, just a gasket. That's not that's not gonna work. So we'll clean that up and put an actual O-ring on it because I have those. Uh, this thing also isn't a magnetic tip, so that's a problem too. Okay, so um, I'm actually gonna wait until my actual drain plugs come in. I don't know why this split is there. I don't like it. They clearly cut it, um, and this isn't designed to take an O-ring. So if I put an O-ring on there, I feel like it's just gonna cut it in the threads and they can put it a worst case scenario i put it on there and whatever right but um this one i mean the, the threads are all fine right but so this one had a crush washer which is okay um i just want the right plugs on you know what i mean and i really don't i don't know i don't know if i want to do an oil change now and then get the right plugs in and do another oil change just to put o-rings on it sounds kind of silly 
and expensive. So I'm gonna put those bolts back in loosely. I'm not gonna put any oil on the bike right now, but I am gonna go on the other side, do a quick clutch adjustment, and then, um, yeah, we're gonna call today done after that. I'm just gonna wait for the other parts. I don't really have the right parts. You know what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm saying. All right, boys, it's been about, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half or so we've been out here, and we're gonna call it quits for the night. Uh, I decided to play it safe on two things. Uh, once I started messing with that engine oil drain bowl, I put an O-ring on, I put it in there. I don't like the way that is. It's, it's as I suspected. It's the, uh, I think it's just been stripped out so much that they forced a bolt in there and that's why I was leaking. So I'm gonna find an oil pan. I already looked earlier. They're all over eBay for a couple hundred bucks. I'm gonna order a whole new oil pan. So I unfortunately won't be able to ride this bike this week, um, but I'd rather play it safe and have you know a much tighter motorcycle. Also, the other thing I decided to do, I did do a clutch adjustment and I, I did get uh, oil out of the primary. I'm very thankful that, I, I, I was kind of scared that some of the holes were dry and they weren't. They all had oil in them, appropriate or not, I don't know. You know, I'll be able to put the appropriate amount in there. But um, since I'm waiting, right now the bike, the bike is completely dry except for fuel. Um, since I'm already gonna be waiting for, uh, I've got a couple parts on order at Harley and I'm gonna be waiting on an oil pan. I'm gonna learn how to do a uh, primary chain adjustment. Uh, and I don't know if I need to, but at least need to check it. I wanna make sure all that stuff is good. I don't wanna fill it all back up with oil and then have to go right back in there and do the same stuff all over again. So uh, I'll have that done here in the next few days. But uh, yeah, for now, I mean, there she is. I rode it yesterday for, you know, 60 miles or so, and, and now she's sitting here. I have to go uh, get this oil dumped at my local auto store so I can have a place to put that back into that. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna get this stuff. I'm gonna go take care of that oil, put the bikes back in the garage, go order an oil pan, and then, well, yeah, we'll just call it a day. All right, fam, welcome back. We still have a lot of work to do on the Dyna. Uh, I do have a, many things I'm waiting for to come in. Several gaskets, oil pan should be here tomorrow. Today's Thursday. Uh, a good buddy, Echo 5 Training over in the Sarasota area. Uh, he's sending me an air filter. I pulled off, let me show you this air filter. I pulled the air filter out of the uh, SNS Super E. Look at this thing. Oh, it smells awful too. It's just completely saturated with oil. It's old, you can tell this thing hasn't been taken care of in a long time. But for the rest of this video, we're not gonna work on this. I'll try not to take up too much time, and this is mostly for the people who expressed some interest in uh, the pressure washing side of what I'm doing. I know some of the people out there uh, left some comments that you were curious. Um, so I've got something I got going on today. I have a job that's coming Sunday, so three days from now. But my soft wash pump, uh, I believe the relay tore up on it. So uh, I'll go over some of my tools here real quick and then uh, we're gonna repair this pressure switch on the soft wash pump. All right, on that video, I had an old Craftsman 2.5 gallon a minute pressure washer. I did upgrade. I, my hand was kind of forced. The, uh, that, that pressure washer was completely a residential pressure washer. and wasn't really designed for what I was doing, so I kind of pushed it to its limits and it crapped out. This one, it is a Predator. It's Harbor Freight, but this is a Honda clone motor, and it gets rave reviews from everybody in the pressure washing communities that I belong to. Uh, I have used it on a job already, works well. Uh, but this, this is my other delivery system. I kind of pointed to it before. This is a pump that pulls through this proportioning valve. I've got water, I've got uh, SH or sodium hypochlorite um, or 12% chlorine that goes in your pool, etc. And then this pulls down uh, from soap in there. With the pump, it's an on-demand pump. What it's doing is it's not shutting off, so it's causing me to blow fuses. Uh, here's my switch for it. I need to get screws. Uh, to mount this thing up here. But uh, the pump will turn on, uh, but it'll build so much pressure when I turn the water off that it'll blow its fuse. So I got a new pressure switch. That's this part down here. And we're gonna wire that up. And then uh, we're gonna test this baby out. Some other tool, there's my uh, there's my 30 gallon barrel of uh, bleach or chlorine, etc. Miscellaneous tools, 12 foot ladder, high pressure hose soft wash hose um, it is a this is like a hybrid air hose works just fine some flexilla water hose 
Uh, some more high pressure hose, my surface cleaner. And uh, yeah, this is a water tank. Somebody also commented that, hey, I believe you're over your, your weight rating on that trailer. Here's the thing. Nobody in their right mind is really carrying around a whole a, a, a buffer tank full of water. That's just, that's hell on your trailer, it's hell on your transmission. You have to have a pretty super heavy duty truck to do that. Uh, what we do is we, I don't fill it all the way up, but I, use, I get enough level in there from the customer's water supply uh, so I can run my soft watch system. Pressure washer doesn't really need to be fed from that. That's primarily for the soft watch system. So let's get inside, fix this pressure switch. All right, well, I'd fully intended to do this inside on my kitchen table, but uh, I can still smell uh, a very slight bleach mixture coming out of the, the, the quick, quick disconnect ports here. So uh, I don't wanna risk getting any of that on my kitchen table or, um, you know, a little place place mats that we have in there. You know, mom will be really pissed. All right, what I don't like is there's no instructions. And the only reason I'm worried about instructions is because what I think I did, uh, I think I broke it. I don't think it broke on its own. I think I screwed this um, pressure switch in way too far. And um, yeah, I'd like to avoid that. All right, just take these four screws out. It gave me new screws. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need those or not. I'm hoping this works, because what I'm having to do right now to as a workaround is to not shut off the water and just leave it running and like run. If you guys can picture me running, do that in your head, please. But um, run back, back and forth when I need to do something. All right, so inside this pump also comes a, uh, a diaphragm. I've never done this before. All right, what side is going in? All right, the lip side is gonna go, gonna go in there. So this is a new diaphragm. The lip side in here. There we go. Now we'll just uh, line up this new one, right? Now when you buy this from the store, I get mine at Tractor Supply. This thing is barely sticking out. Also convenient that I'm doing this here because uh, I've got my main toolbox here. So what I, how I mount this is I've got these uh, these screws hard mounted to the plate to the plate with a, uh, a screw and a nut, and then I just got these uh, uh, little butterfly nuts on there so I can remove and replace it as needed. These these pumps are expected to go out, uh, but these have quick disconnects, which are really handy for times like these. Just plug my hoses back in, push the little locks up. I'm gonna, plug this guy back in and I'm going to show you what I got to adjust that screw. I have a special hex bit for this thing. It's a, it's a 1 16th. When you buy the pumps from the factory or directly from the big box stores, it says it's already set. All right. So what I'm going to do is I don't like to run any of these pumps with the, the hose that's still on the reel. I don't think it's good for the hose. I don't think it's good for the pump. So I got to unravel all of this 250 feet of hybrid air hose, I'm gonna hook up my water source and get this thing full enough to work and start sucking some water out of here. So we'll see you when we're done with that. All right, while the water is filling up, I've got, I've got this plumbed to where I can drain it out. I've got a couple of uh, ball valves there. And this soft wash pump runs off of this marine deep cycle battery. Um, so hopefully when we get this thing turned on, it does what it's supposed to do and uh, does not blow the fuse, that's exactly what was happening. Because basically this thing is building up so much pressure, not stopping, that it was going above the uh, 20 amp fuse that I got in there. We got a few minutes, I need to get this water about up to here uh, before I'm comfortable running running the pump through it. So we'll wait and then uh, we'll show you guys a test. All right, here's the wand we're running the test through. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a homemade wand. You know, I've got this tube directly on here through a CPVC pipe to a quick disconnect on this J-Rod. Um, so let's turn this thing on. Uh, normally on a test, I wouldn't run bleach through it, but I am going to today because the screw didn't go in far enough in my opinion, and it's starting to strip out a little bit. I need to make sure it has just enough pressure to pull both uh, water and bleach and soap, both, three, anyway, and that it will turn off when I turn the ball out. I'm gonna turn this, uh, this pump on, maybe you can hear it in the background. Yeah, it's not producing enough pressure. Now, when I turn this off, the pump should turn off. Right, okay, so the changing the pressure switch did work. 
that's not far enough. This thing normally goes a lot farther. So I wanna see if I can get this screw turned in a little bit more. Now I want this thing to go about 30 feet. Uh, this feels like a pretty weak flow, honestly. So what I'm looking for out of this tube here, the soap that I use is red. So I wanna see a little bit of red. Yeah, let's adjust this just a fucking hair more. I might, oh, that's about as far as I want it. I might have to change, I got a, a quarter inch barb up here. I might have to change that out to a uh, three eighths barb. All right. So right now, the only thing that's on, water and soap. And I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick it up. You see how it's turning red there? All right. Now when I turn on the bleach, I should still see some red coming out. And I don't, completely drowns out. Honestly, we're gonna call it good, at least for Sunday's job. What I don't wanna do is out here while I'm testing it, screw up something with this new switch I just installed. I don't always use soap. I, I typically only use soap on uh, roofs to help the, uh, help the chemical stick to the roof a little better. So what I'm gonna do now, I won't film it. I'm gonna run just fresh water through the pump and the hose and everything for about five full minutes, then drain this thing out. We're gonna call it a wrap. All right, while that thing is uh, flushing out all the chemical, I think we're gonna wrap up this video here. Um, this has been kind of involved. We picked up the uh, banana hammock over there, still waiting on parts. Showed you guys a little bit inside of uh, my pressure washing business, and they uh, got to see me troubleshoot that. I feel like my whole life is nothing but troubleshooting. I do appreciate you coming along for this video uh, and all videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.